A one and a two and a chick a boom a chick. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Kyle Hunt with another episode of Remodelers on the Rise, and I'm excited today to have Ed Earl. Ed is, Ed is uh, pretty fancy. He's got two titles here. One is the Zen Building Group, where he is a great business coach for builders and remodelers and contractors. And then secondly, he does business under Priority One Projects, where he has kind of a unique uh, perspective on things, where he is an owner's construction project management um, I was going to say person at the end of that. Is that fair, Ed? Yeah. Right. I think you're, you're, you're representing um, kind of the owner while they're doing their project and working with a builder. Um, so I've, I've gotten to know Ed. Welcome, Ed, by the way. Thank you. Yes. It's a pleasure having you. Um, I've gotten to know Ed through a mastermind group that him and I are both in with other uh, construction related consultants. We were able to spend some time in Phoenix at the start of the year. Um, and have, uh, really, I've just really enjoyed getting to know him. Um, the, whole, the whole Zen builder moniker is also one that you still have out there, right? Yes, it is. Yes. And, and, and surprisingly, sometimes people have monikers and you're like, I don't know what's up with that. But with Ed, that whole Zen, that Zen feel, he's just a pleasure and a real, it's just relaxing to be around you, Ed. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Kyle. I appreciate that. You're, yeah. you're, you're welcome. <laughs> so the topic today is one that I have been asked a lot about. It's one that continues to pick up steam in our industry. I'm just seeing more and more people take the, the construction management, the need, the need for software um, inside their inside their business. I'm seeing more and more um, embracing that. If, if I had 10 remodelers come up to me in 2015 and 16, I, and I asked them, hey, are you using any cloud-based construction project management, um, you know, builder trend, co-construct? I might hear two out of 10 using it. Yeah. In the last one to two years, I'm hearing four, five, six out of 10. Yeah. Um, which is which is a really good thing. The way I've been kind of positioning it lately is going, you know, five years from now, are we going to need to be using more technology and software in our business? No doubt about it. Right. You know, so why wait? Let's. Right. Yeah. It's like, like, you know, what I say, Kyle, is it's like, go ahead. You know, if, if you were if you were to go into a client today and, you know, pull out your smartphone and say, you know, I have this thing called a smartphone and it's going to allow me to actually reply to your emails in real time and I can send you instant messages like from the job site they look at you like you were crazy right but 10 years ago that wasn't the case right I remember when I showed up on my first job with one of those old trios I don't know if you know like they were glorified palm pilot it was like a game changer and people were like wow this is amazing so that's where I think cloud-based software is today you know we're just we're almost at that tipping point where it's just going to become commonplace. And I think in another few years, people are going to just be, of course, you're, you know, how, how do I access my, my, pro, you know, my, my project, which, which system do you use? Not do you use a system, but which system do you use? Yeah. So, but the, the great news for right now for these would, are still the early adopters is even though it's now maybe three out of 10 or five out of 10, I think it's still the minority. So for those of, that are using it, Oftentimes with our coaching clients, we'll find they're the, you know, they're bidding against two other people and they're the only ones using a cloud-based system. Right. And in that case, then we make sure that they play that to the hilt in the way that they present it and into the client. And many times, in many cases, it's gotten them the job because that's the one distinguishing characteristic. So expand, expand from, on that, put a little bit more, put a little more meat on that. You know, why is it even just from a sales and positioning right. standpoint, Tell me some of what, uh, what yeah. you're seeing there. Yeah, no, uh, you know, I think really, and we'll talk some more about all the different advantages of a cloud-based system, but I think that's the first and foremost is from a marketing standpoint. You know, it sets you apart from your competition. They, and it just gives you a different image. So even if your numbers aren't that much different than someone else, they go, well, geez, you know, Kyle's got this great cloud-based system and you know, we're going to be able to see our photos and he's got the schedules already done and the budgets and, you know, this guy must be organized. If he knows enough to put together this cloud-based system, imagine mm -hmm. what he's going to be able to do when he does our kitchen remodel, you know? So it just gives you a certain level of credibility and infers that this sense of organization and skill and documentation and communication that's available through the cloud-based system 
will translate over into the job. And I think yeah. it actually does. It, yeah, it's, it's even better than just the, the marketing, you know, uh, shine on it. It really right. does, right? right? When all of our information is located in one spot, when I'm able to approve change orders, make selections, when I'm able to pay via ACH, it's convenient for me, the homeowner, when I can go in there and see the schedule, not even, not even talking about the advantages to the builder or the remodeler, but just from a homeowner experience. Um, right. remember, remember before we hit the record button and we were kind of prepping for this and you said, hey, Kyle, the order of these four questions you sent me over, are you sure you want to do this order? And I said, yeah, yeah. well, I just changed it as we're going. <laughs> so I, wanted, I want to do question number two. So for everybody okay. listening, I 5 P'd this, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Yesterday, I sent Ed some questions I had for him. You know, he read through them. I actually want to start with number two. What are the advantages, disadvantages of investing in the construction management software, the cloud-based systems? Tell me more sure. about that. So, I, you know, we've already covered what I think is the biggest advantage, which is the marketing advantage and how it really, in today's world, still will set you apart from most of your competition and will help to, to, to improve the image that you present to, to the, your clients. That's the first advantage. The second is just from an operational standpoint, it makes you much more efficient, right? Because now if you're using the system correctly, every part of your system is integrated together. So instead of having all of your various Excel spreadsheets and, and QuickBook reports and everything else that you're doing, your Dropbox files and all that, it's all integrated together into, into one system. So, uh, you know, another thing that I think sometimes people don't, don't, um, don't think about is just from a risk management standpoint, it's helpful as well because it gives you one central area where everything related to that project is documented and, um, and that can be a big difference if, God forbid, there's some kind of liability down the road or something like that, you can have it all together. Um, Spencer Paget, who's the uh, builder in residence now for Co-Construct, he tells this story back when he used to run his own company. He had a big high-end remodeling company, I think they were in Chicago, and he was doing a, like a $3 million project, and the homeowner refused to pay the last 10%. $300,000. So he turned it all over to his attorney. And because he was using even, co-construct. Even if you, you didn't say three, even if you didn't say three, oh, sorry, the audio cut out there. I was about to say, even if you didn't say that 300,000, I actually did that in my head without you even, oh, I did the good. math in my head. Good. So, but then so the he, audio turns, cut out, he turns all this stuff over to, to the attorney. He had like 1200 pages of documents, right? Correspondence and schedules mm -hmm. and everything turned it all over to his attorney, they sued the client for performance and payment, and he won. Mm. And that probably wouldn't have been as easy to achieve if he, you know, had everything in a bunch of banker boxes and different places, but sure. he could just do so, the download from. So, from I'm, so I'm hearing, I'm hearing, and I agree with several of those advantages. What would you put on the disadvantage side? So the disadvantage is it's hard, you know, it's really hard to implement. And Say, um, I, 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 don't go too fast. This is the moment of truth for so many emphasize that a little bit, lean into that a little bit, because it, yeah. it is hard. It's a, right. it's a big, go ahead, tell me exactly. more about that. No, it is, it's, it's very hard. Uh, and it's hard for a couple of reasons. One, because you know the business that we're in, there's always a crisis going on. There's always that urgent thing that needs to be taken care of. And the urgent thing is never, oh, I need to sit down and spend three hours you know, learning how to use a cloud-based system. So it's just really hard to find the time to implement it. And then I think too, it's also a challenge to know how to implement it. And where I think a lot of contractors get discouraged is that they go, okay, starting November 1st, we're gonna do everything through the cloud, right? And that, it just doesn't work that way. So what, I, what we recommend to our coaching clients is you take it in pieces and you do it in, you, you know, you kind of, you, you take it in pieces and then that way you can take it down in a much easier way. But that's the that's really the, the the major disadvantage is that it's it's difficult it's challenging um, the integration with the accounting system is also another challenging thing as well so um, so those that's that's really the the, the disadvantages yeah and I, and I and I did kind of emphasize that because you know the when you get when you when you listen when you take the whether it's builder trend co-construct something else when you look at the demos when you talk to talk to them talk to others 
you know, there are some bells and whistles on there where you're sitting there going, oh, I've been needing this. This is going to be so nice. This is going to be so right. wonderful. And then you, you start the process of implementing it. And I just see it so often where we get overwhelmed by it, where remodelers are getting just burnt out from it. And, and I want to lean into that pieces a little bit more because um, that is, I found that to be the case too, of just saying it's the month of October. We are going to focus this month on the scheduling component mm -hmm. of Builder Trend or Co-Construct. Next month, we're going to focus in on this. What pieces do you often see people starting with and what would you kind of recommend they start with and how do you kind of build this up? Yeah, perfect. That was the next thing I was going to cover. So sure. we're right on, we're on question number three, Kyle. Which Ooh, it's it's, like, we, it's like we got a plan. So here's the way that I recommend to, to, uh, to my clients of how you implement it is start with the pieces that interface with the homeowners. So sometimes they're called the client portal. And so, you know, those are things like um, the schedule, job log updates, photos, document storage, those kinds of things. And the reason why I suggest starting with those is for two reasons. One, because those are the easiest things to deal with because it's basically just kind of with you and the client. You're basically just putting all this stuff together and the client does it. And, um, and the second reason is because that's all the client sees. So if you're use, utilizing the system just mainly for the marketing purposes, that's all you really need to do. So now as an owner's rep, um, when I'm working for a client that's hired me to, to manage their projects, oftentimes I'm working with a builder that doesn't have a cloud-based system. So I'll come in and use one of the cloud-based systems that I use. I use three different ones currently. And, um, but in those cases, all I need is a few modules. So I'm putting the construction schedule in there. I'm putting all of the related documents and files and, and contracts and all of that in there. I'm taking uh, progress photos uh, consistently during the project and putting those in there. And then also kind of posting a basic budget. And that's it. And I'm the only person inputting that information in so that my client can see it. So it's very easy to do. So that's kind of the first step. And then once you get that done, then you can start to involve the other parts of the modules that involve the rest of the company. So maybe you start to run your job, uh, your, your job uh, logins, you know, your hours logs through there. Uh, you know, maybe you start to do some of the correspondence with the employees and some of that kind of work. Maybe you have them starting to do uh, job logs and posting the job logs in there. So that's the second step. So first, you just involve you and the client. Second, you involve your company. Then the third step is now you involve your trades, okay? So now you're doing your, 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 all of your bidding through there, you're doing your purchase orders through there, and you're, you're integrating it with that. And then the fourth step is integrating the accounting. Mm -hmm. And those are also in level of difficulty, right? And it makes sense. The first one, it's just you, basically you and the client. Then you involve your company, then you involve the subs, and then lastly, the accounting system. And what the, the, when people fail with a cloud-based system, it's because they either do that in the reverse or they try to do that all together. And it just is an overwhelming task to try to do all of those together. So if I'm a, if I'm a remodeler doing, you know, 1.2 to 1, you know, to $2 million in revenue, I probably have somebody in the office that can help me with this, um, you know, doing kitchens, additions, that type of work. Right. What type of, how long should this process take to go from step one through step four? What would yeah. be kind of the approximate? I'd say best case six months and probably more realistically 12 to 18 months. Okay. I think that's, that's important to hear. You're hearing yeah. some people, you're hearing somebody that's an expert at this, that this is not your first rodeo. You've seen many, many, many businesses do that. I'm putting it through my filter of kind of seeing my clients working with these. And I think oftentimes we just think, okay, yep, I'm going to get this done, done. And then we get real frustrated when we're four months in and we're still not there yet. This right. is something that getting this set up properly, one, it just takes a lot of time, but look at it on a bigger scale. Even if you spend 18, 24 months on it, but then you have it dialed in, you're setting your business up with incredible efficiencies, productivity, great marketing and sales tools, um, and really integrated, better job costing. This is setting you up for the years ahead. So I, I, I share it because part of the answer to this whole thing is don't get frustrated. Don't right. throw in the towel too early. And when I say 12 to 18 months, it's not like you're slogging through this thing every day, 
-hmm. What I'm saying is if you do it in the 12 to 18 months, another thing that I recommend to my clients is just pick one job, you know, pick one project and start with that one and just do that one project. Just do the owner's integration, the owner's portal for one project and do that project start to finish. And then maybe on the next project, do the owner's portal and some of the the internal operations part to it. And, you know, just take it down piece by piece and project by project. And that's why it takes 18 to 24 months, not because you can, and I've had clients do it in three or four months. I mean, if you really want to press it and you're like, look, I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to do it as quickly as I can. And you really commit to it and you, you make the commitments of, for yourself and your organization, you can do it in, you know, three or four months. Um, but, um, but I, my, my, you know, 12 to 18 months is just more of a realistic knowing the demands of the small, the medium sized remodeler yeah. and what else they needed to handle. On yeah, I, I was, I was chatting with a, uh, with a prospect the other day on the phone and they're, they're more in that kind of, you know, smaller, they're a little bit under a million dollars. And she was asking about builder trend and co-construct and, you know, if, um, you know, if it would be recommended and I, I said, well, tell me about the setup of the business. And this is, this is what I found for the most part. There's a few of my clients who are kind of the only person in the office and they're one man, sh one man or one gal shows. And surprisingly, they're able to get a co-constructor builder trend going. But oftentimes what I've seen is you need somebody that can really dedicate a good amount of time and be your point person for it. Um, you know, so as I was listening to this situation, I said, you know what, I, at this point, I don't think it would be something for you to tackle. Continuing to fine tune your process, you know, get some good folders and whiteboards and, and work on your process with the thought of going to it in the future. What have you seen as far as maybe a line of demarcation or even like the staffing aspect of it? Have, have you found those couple things I just shared to be the case as well or anything you'd add to it? Yeah, it's hard to kind of make any kind of general assumptions or guidelines. You know, I think every company is different and it just kind of depends on the owner itself, you know, if the owner's fairly tech savvy and kind of mm -hmm. knows what they feels comfortable with it, then they can kind of take it down and take it down in pieces. Um, and sometimes though, once you get to kind of a larger size, you do need that one point person who's kind of gonna, you know, run point on the, on the cloud-based system and really work to, to implement it, kind of be the one person that's talking to tech support and, hey, how do we do this and how do we do that, and that kind of stuff, so. Okay. Good. Um, a little shout out when I was I was thinking in my head to somebody that's kind of running their own thing in the office, Aaron Garner. If he's listening to this, I just wanted to give him a shout out. I've been very impressed that he has been able to implement this sucker single handedly, and he's doing a very good job with it. Um, oh, great. Cool. Any anybody you want to shout out? Uh, no. Okay. Good enough. So the biggest, if um, I don't know if you're on my private Facebook group or modelers community. But if you want to get people f talking, a uh, bunch, you know, about 600 remodelers in there. If you want to get people talking, one topic you can bring up is hows. Mm. Should I advertise on how? Should I right. not advertise? That gets the people going. And right. the other big topic is builder trend or co-construct. Builder yeah. trend or co-construct. Occasionally you might hear like a, a UDA construction suite in there mixed in. Right. Um, but it is a topic that everybody wants to know and everybody wants an answer to. Um, so I want you to pick one so that we can just be done with this discussion. Right. Uh, go. Okay. So here's the, here's my answer. There is no one right answer. Okay. So yeah, unfortunately that's the case. It's just um, each of the systems have their own strengths and, and weaknesses and work better for different people. Just like people have different personalities and, you know, some people like to drive one certain car versus another. So it's really the same thing with the cloud-based systems. You know, I first started studying and using them five years ago. And back then, Builder Trend was really clear and ahead the leader. You know, they were the largest, they had the most in the development standpoint, and they, they were just ahead, heads up, above everyone else. But co-construct over the years, you know, has just continued to move forward. Donnie Wyatt, the owner, has just continued to be dedicated to his company. And really now they've gotten to the point where I consider them, you know, equal to Builder Trend. And, you know, I think that co-construct is better in certain ways and Builder Trend is, is better in other ways. And, so give me um, a few of those in some ways. What are you seeing maybe yeah. that? Um, that you like about a certain feature? So like for me as an owner's rep, 
I often use Builder Trend more than Co-Construct. I'm using them both. Actually, right now, I'm not even using Builder Trend. I have one project in Co-Construct and one in UDA Construction Online. But Builder Trend has, for the, the modules that I use, like the calendar and the, the, the overall customer portal, just the layout and how you can customize it and things, I just like the Builder Trend layout better. Um, mm -hmm. I like the way that the calendars and the construction schedules look better. I like the way that the documents are laid out. Um, and it's just kind of a personal thing. Like for example, um, uh, uh, Builder Trend uses folders. Well, I'm a Windows guy, so I like to see things in folders, right? But if you're more of a Google guy, like if you use Gmail, you understand you use labels, not folders. Well, mm -hmm. CoConstruct uses labels and Builder Trend uses folders. So I just kind of like things organized in folders as opposed to labels. But, you know, is one better than the other? Not necessarily. So gotcha. um, on the CoConstruct side of things, I think that if you're looking to fully integrate and just do the whole thing, I think CoConstruct is, is, um, is, a, is a, a, the better bet in that case. Um, what we've heard, Kyle, from, from Diane, who's in our mastermind group, as well as some other accounting um, pros who work with construction, is that they feel that the QuickBooks integration is better with CoConstruct than it is with Builder Trend. Um, my understanding is that I think Builder Trend tries to use QuickBooks online more and integrate through that, but there's many accounting people. Um, uh, including Diane and uh, Karen uh, with online accounting who insist on wanting to use the desktop version of QuickBooks because that's the only way that you can do job costing. And for a construction company, you got to be able to do job costing. So, and I've been told that, um, that CoConstruct does a better job of integrating with Quick QuickBooks desktop than, uh, than does Builder Trend. Mm. That, that helps. That helps just to hear some of those because it's not anything like you described. And frankly, what I've experienced, it's, it's been very much when, when a remodeler digs in and says, okay, I'm going to really evaluate both, which has happened a lot. It really is, it's almost like flipping a coin. It's 50% of right. the time they arrive here, 50% of the time they arrive there. And I think what also is important for us to understand is that this is ever changing. You know, it is October right. 15th, 2019. You know, we, we re-record this on January 15th, 2020. And you may say, you know what? They just had an update that is really just streamlined this process. Right. Um, is, it fair, is it fair to say it's kind of a two horse race? Is there any, any other um, software out there that- You know, you, you mentioned it probably because I, I mentioned it too. So the third one that I use is UDA Construction Online. And um, they like, See, the issue with all three of these programs is that they were all based on a desktop and cloud-based, but still based to be run from a desktop or a laptop. And then they added the uh, mobile app uh, later. And uh, they're all trying to integrate their mobile apps so that they can run these programs from a smartphone as opposed to as well as they do from a desktop. And they're all kind of still struggling and, and working with that. UDA Construction Online is actually was UDA Construction Suite, which maybe many of you users might use, which is that it was a desktop-based version, not a cloud-based. And then they converted it to a cloud-based, and now they have an app that runs on the phone. But they've had to make those conversions along the way. Um, and so they, they're, uh, in my opinion, a little bit behind where CoConstruct and Builder Trend is because of they, they were kind of coming from a different place than than Builder Trend and Co-Construct was. So, but gotcha. you know, for maybe some of your users that are already using construction, UDA construction suite, well then it might be just a natural for them to go into the construction online and just, you know, they already know the construction suite mm -hmm. and use it. This is even that look, yeah, the look and the feel and the, and the right. words. Right, and the exactly. So, and then there's, you know, there's some others because I kind of have gotten into this space and it's kind of my, my area of expertise and my interest. Just met with a guy a couple of weeks ago who has a, a new um, program called Struck Build. I don't even think it's, it's not even available yet, still in a beta stages. But he's actually basing his programming on a mobile first application, right? So he's designing mm -hmm. it for a smartphone first and foremost. And that's the way it's designed. So he's got some really great looking uh, systems and programs for, he's really mostly focusing on being able to put proposals together but it's a pretty cool concept to think about that a contractor could basically 
put together the proposal and then present it right on their phone, mm -hmm. send it to the client. The client can review it on the phone. You know, you can still review proposals from co-construct and, and builder trend on the phone as well, but they're in a PDF file. They're not designed to be viewed through a smartphone where this struck built is actually designing it to be viewed through a smartphone. Right. So. so we'll keep, yeah, we'll keep keeping an eye out for it. Um, question that I hear kind of often, or that's, that's a frustration that I hear often is, um, you know, sometimes our own maybe internal team and, and um, you know, workers out in the field, not really embracing logging their time, but also the, the hurdle of getting trade partners or subcontractors to buy into using yeah. the program. What's your words of advice or encouragement on that? Yeah, no, that's definitely a challenge. And again, that's why I made that part of it the third of the four steps, mm. you know. And for some people, you might even flip the third and the fourth and say, look, do your QuickBooks integration first before you try to involve your subs in. It's that's just if you have really That's if you have really cranky subs because yes, QuickBooks right. is hard to integrate. Right. So you must right. have some really tough subs if you're going to flip right. those two around. Yeah, but the subs are, you know, the, the subs are, I think, even more reticent to adopt new technology than the general contractors often are. Um, you know, they're just used to being out there and, and you know, working in the labor force and, and, you know, depending on where part of the country you're in, you know, the English may not be the first language. So then you've kind of got that barrier as well. So it's just, it's difficult to, to get the subs involved. And besides, they don't necessarily work for you. So you can't sit there and say, hey, you got to use, you know, this cloud-based system or, or you're fired. So, mm -hmm. although I've had clients do that, um, I think uh, you know, Lewis Builders in, in Monterey, I mean, pretty much, I think if you want to be a subcontractor for Lewis Builders, you you have to, you have mm -hmm. to play with Co-Construct, which is the yeah, one. And I Right. And I think that, you know, I, I've seen it with some of my clients. I think of um, one of my clients here in Michigan where it was just like, a, they've had enough. Like, okay, we've been dabbling with it. We've been messing around with it. Some of our trades are in it. Some are, we're doing here. Right. And they're like, we are going all in on this. And right. if you're not willing to, and sometimes you, you have to do that to pull them along. I think part right. of the benefit of that is technology is going to continue to be more and more important in our industry. And sometimes as builders, as remodelers, we're, we're able to elevate the game of our, of our trade partners. You know, so selling right. them on the benefits on, yes, I know it's clunkier right now, but longer term, this is, you're going to enjoy this and you're going to appreciate this. You've got you've to be spin, spinning it in a positive way for them right. or else they just get overwhelmed and see it as just, you know, more work and work right. that's a waste of time. And also, if you've done the other first two steps, right, you've, you've integrated the customer portal and you've started using it internally, then you can be more convincing when you go to your subs and you're like, look, we've been using this system for the last, you know, 12 months or eight months or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've got it dialed in and, you know, all of our guys are logging into their, their uh, log hours, you know, through this. And we're using all the internal communication, all Get of our payments, clients right? are seeing this stuff. Yeah. So then you can be more convincing with the subs and say, hey, we're using this system. We've been using it for so many months and, mm. you know, you're, you're either on it with us or you're, you're not. But, you know, we're. Mm. That we're that's forward. huge. That's huge advice. Just even the order in which you implement this can play a huge factor. Take this, you know, level of failure, you know, from. 50% of the time way down if you are able to get in. It's, you know, it, it, almost, it reminds me of kind of like Dave Ramsey's debt snowball. It's kind of like, you know, you line up all of the debt, smallest to largest, and forget about the interest rate. Just pay off the smallest one first because just the psychological benefit right. of it, right? right. It's, not, it's, not yeah. the, it's not the mathematical benefit of it. It's the psychological benefit of it. And when you start getting the schedule and the job log and photos, and you start getting some of these things checked off, you're going to build some momentum with it and some confidence right. with it. Right. Mm, good. You know, the, the, uh, so what I, what I want to do to kind of, kind of wrap up is kind of think about what we covered and maybe, you know, if you were to, if you wanted the people listening to have like one clear takeaway, Hey, if you heard nothing else, here's what I think you should hear the most. And I'll, right. I'll kind of share mine as well. Um, and then while we're, while we're thinking about that, how do people get a hold of you if they want to chat with you about, you know, talking about this, doing some coaching or consulting on this topic? Right. So I'm going to leave you actually with a, a concept, the one thing that I didn't talk about, but it's what I think is one of the best advantages of a cloud-based system, and it's the construction schedule. And what I love about putting, I always tell my clients, never print a construction schedule anymore. If you have a cloud-based system, never print a construction schedule because 
once you print it, it's out of date. And I compare it to a weather forecast, right? You can pull up yesterday's paper and see what the weather forecast is, but it's out of date as well, right? Mm -hmm. So we're also used to now looking on our smartphones and seeing what the weather forecast is. Well, a construction schedule is the same way. It's a dynamic, constantly moving information piece that changes through as conditions change that are beyond our control. Just like the weather patterns and conditions are beyond our control, many of the construction schedule issues are as well. So if you train your client to only access the construction schedule through their web-based portal, and it's constantly changing and you do a good job of updating that schedule, you know, twice a week or once a week, then your client will start to see, oh, well, you know, oh, we were supposed to start drywall next Tuesday, but now I see it's pushed off to Thursday. Well, you know, there's probably something that happened along there. So I just mm -hmm. love the fact of only having a construction schedule on a cloud-based system reinforces that dynamic and somewhat uncertain nature of a construction schedule. I like that. It's good advice. Um, how do people get a hold of you? So how people can get a hold of me is um, they can go to one of my two websites. Um, the first one is the zenbuilder.com. Um, that's where I do most of my public presentations and things. Um, I'm going to be speaking at the International Building Show this year. I've got a couple of presentations. My main one is on, um, it's called uh, Zen Builder Wisdom, Building Trust, Reducing Conflict, and Eliminating Homeowner Drama. You have, your so, you have the title of your IBS talk memorized? Uh, yeah. Wow. I, <laughs> Actually, I have, I have it, and I have it down here. It's a, down at the bottom of my screen, too, but yes. Because I'm, I'm speaking at IBS, and I'm drawing a blank on what I'm speaking about. <laughs> Cause I'm not, cause I'm not as impressive as Adderall. Yeah. Right. So you can send me an email, ed at the and, uh, or you can text or call me at 858-232-3677. Say that one more time in case they're 858-232-3677. Okay. Awesome. And then I think what I would, what I would end it, end it with just this topic of when I, when I asked you how you called it, you said cloud-based construction project management system, right. so this topic of CB, CBC PMS. That's your acronym. <laughs> nah. that, that, that has the same ring as like the IBS international builder show. It's like just not a good acronym, but yes, right. Exactly. Based construction. Um, I, I, I would share um, probably the biggest thing that I heard that I think is, is worthy of repeating um, several things that you said, but the one of the order in which you laid that out, um, frankly, I've been seeing it kind of reversed where it's like, well, this isn't ready for prime time. Let's not show our customers. Let's not have our clients log into this. We're not comfortable in it yet. But we're hanging fruit. It's the stuff that um, can, really make a, can really make an impact. So right. that can make a huge difference. Um, and then the, the other thing I just want to leave everybody with is, Kind of, kind of what I hinted at, but I just want to lean into it a little bit more is it is 2019. We're heading into 2020. When you roll, you know, when you think 2023 or 2025, it'll, the, the days will keep cruising. The great majority of you listening to this will still be in business and doing what you're doing. My question is, is in 2023, are you still going to be running your business, running your systems, your processes the same way you are today? Or are you going to be utilizing for efficiency, productivity, differentiation reasons, some of these software options? And I think when I ask that question, pretty much everybody says, no, we'll be using more technology. And the kicker is, is the sooner you can start with it, you can start wrestling with it, working at it, hacking away at it, getting better at it, building knowledge in it, the better. You know, put it off for another two or three years. There's a lot of your competition that's going to be embracing this. And it truly is time-saving, productivity, efficiency, customer experience. Also know that, you know, the baby boomers, yes, but you know, these, these 35 year olds from a few years ago are now in their forties. They're very used to technology. This is normal. And in the years of head utilizing and using technology is going to be more and more normal and expected from your homeowners. So I just want to encourage you guys to dig into this. You know, there's not one right answer. You heard it from Ed, you know, start with one of them, do some demos, talk to some of your colleagues about it, what they're using and, and, and dig in. Anything you'd add or put a little exclamation mark at the end here, Ed? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's it exactly. And, you know, it's not going to get any easier. Yes, these systems mm -hmm. are getting better and better, but they're getting better and better in having more features, better integrated. Mm -hmm. 
but it's as easy as it's ever going to get. So you, at some point, you just need to bite the bullet and, and do it. There you go. Thank you, Ed, very, very much. Um, how do we want to end, the, end this podcast? I'll end it with something uh, like this. Thank you for listening to another episode of Remodelers on the Rise. How was, did that sound professional? That sounds super professional. All right. We'll talk to you again soon, Ed. See ya. All right. Take care.